Good afternoon. My name is Christy Gentry. I'm a regional manager with Delmarva, and I want to welcome Aaron Nagel back again. Uh, the purpose of today's meeting is basically to uh, provide an overview for the development and implementation of the new iBudget service tools and hopefully get your feedback moving forward. Now, a lot of things went into the, develop to the development. Every effort was made to include feedback from a variety of stakeholders, from individuals, family members, providers, APD, APA, the list goes on. Tools were also posted on our Delmarva Del website and feedback was solicited from all stakeholders. Also, there were work groups between APD, APA, Delmarva, and many providers, including FARC, to offer face-to-face -face recommendations. So, the outcome of all of this information gathering has resulted in shortened tools for most services, removal of perf perfect compliance with an opportunity to demonstrate partial compliance for some standards, and opportunity for technical assistance. We've also removed potential recruitment for non-critical components. Now, for example, for support coordinators, if you remember, we had a standard that said you had to send um, the support plan to the individual or guardian within 10 days of the effective date of the support plan. While that is still a standard, potential recruitment is no longer identified there. Okay. Our tools, you'll find that they're simplified, they're easier to follow, we've added protocols and potential not met reasons to clarify the requirements, as well as uh, hopefully make our review process more transparent. There's also a clearer linkage to source documents. We've, what's most important about this is that we've aligned with our CMS assurances in order to keep the waiver in Florida. I'd like to go over the tool with you just a little bit if you don't mind. I pulled up the support coordinator tool and I can show you some of the things I was talking about. To the left column you're going to find the standard that is required in standard number one. This one happens to be level of care is reevaluated at least annually. Under the protocols, you are going to find basically everything the reviewer is going to ask you for. Um, and then some probably. This is actually a good section for you to help prepare yourselves for the Del Marble review. On the right hand side, you are going to see not met reasons. This is basically our decision making process. This is also another way to help you prepare for uh, your review. Now I'm going to drag down to the next standard and you're going to see that this standard is highlighted and under number two it's marked new. Well this is a standard that's specifically related to the I budget. So yes this standard is going to be reviewed but you will either receive a MET or technical assistance on this standard and there will be no score attached. So. This is a learning opportunity. Our reviewer at this time will provide technical assistance for any new standards. Now all of the new tools have been implemented effective February 1st and this has allowed APD and APA to continue to collect critical data for uh, federal and state reporting. It also provides those APD regions who have not yet gone on to the I budget the opportunity to you know, help with their transition. Now all service standards, like I said, will be reviewed. Reviewers are going to score MET or TA and provide technical assistance at that time. Now any new training requirements will stay inactive and not be reviewed until the iBudget handbook has been promulgated and a date for the new training is determined. Provider scores will only be based on the HGBS waiver handbook from November 2010 and other requirements, you know, such as the Florida statutes. Um, implementation phase will last from February 1st, 2013 through January 31st, 2014. And this gives providers the opportunity to adjust to the iBudget handbook requirements. Um, there are many providers who are going to be deemed, you know, in that review period. So it's critical that you get online and review our tools and get familiar with the changes. As always, we will be receiving feedback throughout this period and, and making changes based on the recommendations. Um, for those areas of the state that are not yet on the I budget, our DD waiver services will be crosswalked to the I budget services. So, for example, ADT will be crosswalked to Life Skills 3, Supportive Employment to Life Skills 2, and so on. Now, all of our review tools, quick reference guides, and procedures are posted to our website, www.dfmc-florida.org, and I highly recommend you sign up for our email updates. 
um, this will send you an email blast every time we make any changes to either our tools or some of our resources. Now I did mention the quick reference guide. I'd like to show that to you real quickly. I think it's a quick and easy way to uh, look at the changes. Now for example for support coordination you're going to see an overview up here at the top and that's gone from 31 to 24 standards with five new standards added. Um, on the left side you're going to have our old HGBS waiver standards. On the right side you're going to have the new iBudget standards. So if you see on the left and on the right there being a standard that means it's pretty much the same and then we're looking at the same things. Now when you see nothing here and something over there those are new standards on the iBudget handbook. Uh, from the iBudget handbook. You'll see some that are grayed out, and that just means that language has been removed. And if I go down a little bit, you'll see the standards that were either removed or rolled into another standard. And in this case, there were several. Um, at the bottom, you're going to find training specific to that service. You'll see that the first four remain the same from iBudget and HEBS. They're exactly the same. There are two new trainings that have been added, um, level of care training and introduction to social security work incentives. And these are trainings that will be coming out this year for all support coordinators. Now, I know many of you are going to have a lot of questions throughout this process. The best way to get an answer quickly is to contact our customer service represent representative, Beth Strategias. Her number is 866-254-2075. Or you can email her at townsy at dfmc.org. You're also welcome to contact our reviewers, our regional managers of your areas. We all are trying to get the information out there for everybody. And do you have any questions? No, and I do want to thank you very much for taking the time to go over this. And again, as she said, if you do have questions, by all means, go to their website. All this material is on their website as well. As you're watching the video, you'll also be able to click on the links below and see the different information that she just went over as well. But again, Beth Strategarius does answer questions, and she does answer them pretty quickly. So if you do have questions, take the time to write her. Don't be scared. Just ask questions. It'll help. If you have any questions for me, give me a call, Aaron Nangle, 727-841-8943, or write me at waiverinfo at AOL.com. I hope this helps you, and you guys have a good day.